Welcome to the Los Angeles Gun Club. My name is Chi Kwan. I'm a range master, a firearms instructor, a former Marine Corps infantryman, and a contestant on History Channel's Top Shot. Before we go on and actually introduce what weapons we're going to be showing you today, I'm going to go ahead and talk about safety. Now, safety is absolutely paramount while shooting at the Los Angeles Gun Club, not only for yourself, but also for the people around you. Now, the Marine Corps has taught me five safety rules. The very first, treat every weapon as if it were loaded. Second, never point your weapon at anything you do not intend to shoot. Third, keep your finger straight and off the trigger until you're ready to fire. Fourth, keep your weapon on safe until you intend to fire. And finally, the fifth, know your target and what lies beyond and in between it. Now all of these safety rules, when combined, will guarantee that you and the people around you will be safe while firing at the Los Angeles Gun Club. Okay, now before we move on to the weapons, let me go ahead and touch base once again on safety. Now once again, safety is extremely important when you're handling these firearms. That way, you want to keep in mind exactly what I told you about safety before. When you approach these firearms right here, you always want to make sure that you treat these weapons as if they were loaded. So that means that when you pick up the gun, you don't want to accidentally point the gun at yourself or anyone around you. Now, once again, you always want to keep your finger straight and off the trigger until you're ready to shoot because your finger is your best safety. All right, now, uh, some of these firearms don't actually have safeties on them, and that's why, once again, you want to use your finger as your first and primary safety. And uh, let's see. Know your target and what lies beyond and in between your target. As you can see, we have an orange target out there. Right now, you know for a fact that there's nothing behind the target. But just in case, you just want to make that, take that extra second to make sure that there is nothing in front of or behind the target that can be dangerous to someone else. Right now, we've selected four different firearms that I'll show you how to use. The very first firearm that we have for you right now is the Beretta 92FS. This is a 9mm semi-automatic pistol that's used by the U.S. military and several different law enforcement agencies. It's a very simple gun for a beginner to load, operate, and shoot. Additionally, this pistol also has a little bit of a weight to it, so it's not going to have as much recoil. The next pistol is this revolver right here. This is a Smith & Wessex 86. This is a 38 Special 357 Magnum pistol. Now, this weapon has a lot of weight to it. It definitely is going to reduce the amount of recoil, so that's why I definitely recommend this one for a beginner to learn how to shoot. Now, moving on to long guns. We have for you right now an AK-47. Now, this AK-47 right here is a California legal version of the AK-47 with California approved bullet button and a legal 10 round magazine. Next firearm is a Remington 870 shotgun. Now this shotgun right here is going to pack a little bit of a punch. It holds seven rounds inside the magazine tube and it's one sweet piece. Uh, basically, this is a very simple to learn how to load, operate, and shoot. However, there are a lot of, uh, a lot of considerations that you need to uh, remember when you're actually handling this firearm. So, with all guns, you want to have a good firm grip on the gun with your dominant hand. You also want to have a high firm grip. And by that, what I mean is that you want to place your dominant hand right on the pistol grip and have it as high up as possible. Now, with a lot of beginner shooters, I notice that they usually hold the gun like this, and there's a big giant gap between the web of their hand and the beaver tail right here. Now, the reason I don't recommend this grip is because it's not a very stable one. When you shoot, what happens is the gun's going to jump around. As you can see, if you have a limited grip on it, the gun might actually fly out of your hand. So definitely make sure that you have your hand all the way up on this pistol. As well, you want to keep your fingers straight and off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. That way you don't accidentally squeeze the trigger and shoot something without intending to. Now, basically, you're going to use your weak hand, and you're going to wrap it around your strong hand, and basically you want to keep your thumbs on the side just like this. Now, it's very important, especially for semi-automatic pistol, that you never place your thumb back here uh, right behind the slide or right on the slide itself, because whenever you shoot, the slide cocks back. Now, if your thumb's back there, obviously you're going to cut yourself, or you might even risk breaking your own thumb. So it's very important that you always keep your thumbs right here on the side while you're shooting this pistol and away from the actual slide. So the way I do it is I just keep it right here on the frame or you can have it tucked in, whichever's comfortable for you, as long as your thumbs are right there on the side. Now that we've discussed how to properly hold this pistol, I'm gonna go ahead and show you a little bit about, that, about the pistol and then I'll show you how to properly load it as well. So this specific pistol right here has a safety, which is this black knob located right here on the back. Now, it's located on both sides, so if you're left-handed or right-handed, you can easily access the safety. When the safety is rotated down like that, that means that the safety is on, you will not be able to fire this pistol. In order to turn the safety off, all you need to do is flip up. Once you say, see that red dot right there, the safety is off and you will be able to shoot this pistol. Now, the next feature that this pistol has is this piece right here. This is called a hammer. Basically, when the hammer is cocked up like this, the pistol is on double action. Now, for lack of better terms, when the gun's on double action, it's just going to be a little bit harder for you to shoot because you're going to need to squeeze the trigger all the way back before the gun's fired. When the 
hammer's cocked back, the trigger moves back as well, making the gun a little bit easier to shoot. Now that's basically not the textbook definition of double action, single action, but I'm not gonna go over that. It's a little bit easier if you just take my definition for it, okay? Now, this safety also double as a decon. So what that does is it brings the hammer safely back up without shooting the pistol. So if you put the safety back on after firing off a couple of rounds, the next shot will be in double action and it will be a little bit difficult to squeeze. All right, now moving on. This lever right here, this is called the slide release. Once this pistol runs out of ammunition, the slide will automatically lock open just like this. Now in order to turn or uh, send the slide forward, all you need to do is depress the slide release. You want to push it down and not in towards the gun. Uh, this lever right here, this is or actually this button right here is called the magazine release. When you depress it, the magazine will slide right out. Now, this lever right here, this is called the takedown lever. Do not touch the takedown lever. It's going to disassemble the weapon, and I don't think you want to disassemble the weapon unless you want to clean it for us later on. Now, the magazines that we have here hold only up to 10 rounds. Now, in order to load the magazines, you're going to take the back end of the bullet, which is the flat part right here, and you're going to depress it into the front end of the magazine right where the ramp pops up. Now, make sure that you don't push the bullet down from the top because these side walls right there will physically prevent the bullet from going down. So what you need to do is push the bullet parallel to the ramp, straight down, and then slide it back underneath these walls right there. Once you have the bullet in, you're going to take your thumb, place it on the back end of the bullet, and then just basically repeat the process until you have up to 10 rounds loaded. Now for beginner, uh, beginning shooters, it's going to be a little bit difficult to actually load this magazine to full capacity. So what I recommend is that you just load it straight up to 5 rounds, and then you'll be set. Now with this pistol, there are two different ways to load this pistol. The first way is when your slide is forward like this. What you're going to do is take the magazine and slap it right here into the back or bottom end of the pistol grip. Once you have the magazine firmly inserted, inserted you're going to go ahead, grip right here where these grooves are, you're going to pull the slide back, and you're going to release it. What that does is it pushes the bullet from the magazine into the chamber, which loads the gun and makes it ready to shoot. That is the first way to shoot this or load this pistol. Now, when you're loading the gun that way, make sure that you always keep your hand behind this point right here. Why? Because if you have your hand forward at that point, when you pull the slide back, there's a chance that when you let it go, you might cut yourself right there where the barrel meets the slide. And that really hurts, believe me. So, always hold right here where these grooves are, or right where the safeties are at. The second way to load this pistol is when your slide is locked open and you're out of ammunition. Just go ahead, eject the magazine. Once you have the magazine reloaded, stick it back inside. And this time, all you need to do is depress the slide release right here. And once again, the pistol will load. Once the gun is loaded and ready to shoot, go ahead and make sure you hold the gun properly just like I showed you. You want to have both of your hands wrapped together and you want to keep your fingers straight off the trigger until you're ready to fire and you also want to keep your thumbs right here on the side. Now, you want to make sure that you have a good firm stance as well, or a good balanced stance. What you want to do is basically keep your feet shoulder width apart slightly staggered. Now it's important that you don't stand in some crazy exaggerated position like they do in Hollywood movies and that you just stand comfortably. That way you remain balanced and you remain comfortable. You want to have your back straight and you want to lean slightly forward. You want to extend both of your arms and you want to bring the gun up to eye level. Now it's very important that you bring the gun up to eye level because if you have it slightly lower, you're going to want to naturally bend down just to see the sights and that's going to put you in a very uncomfortable position. So just go ahead, do yourself a favor and bring the gun up to eye level. You also want to make sure that your arms are straightened out, especially the shooting arm. You want to have your wrist locked and you want to have your elbow fully extended. Once you've accomplished that, you're going to need to aim next. So. Aiming is fairly simple. What you want to do is align the front sight post right there in the open gap of the rear sight. Now, what that looks like is this diagram right here. As you can see, the orange tip right here is the front sight, and the black U, that's the rear sight. You align your sights so that it's a flat line straight across the top of the sights. And basically, to do that, all you need to do is look straight down the gun. Once you have your sights aligned, you're going to place it on the center of your target, and when you squeeze the trigger, your bullet should impact somewhere around the front sight tip. But of course, if your bullets go everywhere, that's perfectly fine as well, because you're all here to have fun anyway, right? Okay, so now that we've discussed how to properly stand and aim, next thing you need to do is make sure that you take the safety off. A lot of shooters always forget to take the safety off when they're shooting the Breda 92, and uh, it's, uh, it's pretty hilarious, actually. So just make sure you don't be one of those, uh, those guys that just stands there forever and try to squeeze the trigger and have nothing happen. Go ahead, take your thumb, flip up on the safety, and when you're ready, that's when you take your finger and you slowly, steadily press the trigger back until you fire out a bullet. And what that does is it shoots out the bullet, it ejects the empty shell casing, and it automatically reloads for you so that you do not need to pull the slide back each time. Just keep on squeezing the trigger until your slide locks open and you run out of ammunition. 
Once the ammunition's out, go ahead, eject your magazine, set the pistol on the table, and once again, reload the magazine and repeat the entire process. And that's basically it for the Beretta 92FS. Just once again, as a small safety consideration, you always want to keep the pistol pointing in a safe direction. You always want to make sure that your finger is kept straight and off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. And you always want to keep your thumbs on the side as well. The next pistol that we're going to discuss is the Smith & Wesson Model 686. Now this pistol is a revolver. This pistol also has a pretty heavy frame, which means that it's going to reduce the amount of felt recoil. Now with this pistol right here, you want to make sure that you have a good firm grip on the gun simply by wrapping your dominant hand around the pistol grip. Now remember, you want to keep this gun pointing in a safe direction and you always want to keep your finger kept straight and off the trigger until you're ready to fire. You're going to do the same. You're going to wrap your left hand or your weaker hand around your dominant hand and for this pistol, you can choose to keep your thumbs right on the side or back here. With this gun right here, what you don't want to do is wrap your weak hand or any part of your hand around the cylinder, which is this piece right here. Because whenever you shoot, all of the hot gases, all of the fire, comes out of this port right here. So if you're covering the cylinder with your hand, you're gonna burn yourself. So go ahead and make sure you have both of your hands wrapped tightly together and you'll be perfectly fine. Now to load this weapon, what you're gonna do is simply push this latch right here forward towards the cylinder, and at the very same time, you're gonna tap the cylinder out. Once you have the cylinder open, it's very simple. You're gonna go ahead, take your bullets, and you're gonna drop them in one at a time, one into each chamber. Now, for this specific model, it only holds six rounds, so you can only load up to six bullets. Once you have your bullets loaded, go ahead, close the cylinder, and this pistol right here is ready to shoot. Now, for the Smith & Wesson 686, there is no safety. Your finger is your first and primary safety, and that's why it's very important for you to keep your finger straight and off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. Now, for this pistol, it has a hammer, which is this piece right here. When the hammer is cocked up, the trigger is going to stay all the way forward, meaning that this gun will be a little bit difficult to shoot because you need to squeeze the trigger all the way back before the gun will fire. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and pull the hammer back, which reduces the trigger pull, making this gun a lot easier to shoot. So if you barely tap it, it's going to fire. Now, you do not need to pull the hammer back if you do not want to, but if you do, always make sure that the gun is first pointing at your target. You never want to go ahead and point the gun up towards the ceiling and pull the hammer back because you might accidentally squeeze the trigger. If you do, you're going to damage your ears, you're going to damage some property, and we're going to have some problems later on. So, at this point, once the gun is loaded and ready to shoot, you're going to make sure you hold the gun properly, just like I showed you. You're going to want to have a good balanced stance, keep your feet shoulder width apart, slightly staggered. You're going to want to have your back straight, and you're going to lean slightly forward. Extend both of your arms. And once you've done that, go ahead and look straight down the gun, and what you should see is the front sight post and the rear sight post. Now, in order to aim, what you're going to do is align the front sight right there in the open gap of the rear sight so that it resembles this picture right here. Now, what you want to do is have a straight line all across the top of the sights, which levels out the gun. And once you've done that, place it on the center of your target or wherever else you choose to shoot. And once you're ready, go ahead, squeeze the trigger, or pull the hammer back and squeeze the trigger and the bullets will impact right around the front sight tip. Once you're done firing, go ahead, open the cylinder back up, tilt the pistol over, and then push down on this rod right here. That basically ejects all of the spent casings. Now for this gun, it's important that you don't try to pull the empty shell casings out or, to or basically shake them out because they'll be hot and they'll be stuck inside. Just go ahead, push down right here, and that ejects all the empty shell casings. Now another important consideration with this revolver right here is that it only holds and fires six bullets. So after you've shot off the six bullet, you squeeze the trigger again and nothing happens, it does not mean the gun's broken. It's only out of ammunition. Go ahead, unload it, reload it, and you'll be perfectly fine. Now the next firearm that we have for you is the Remington 870 shotgun. This is a 12 gauge pump action shotgun and it packs quite the punch. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to first hold this firearm. Now with the shotgun and with all long rifles, what you first need to do is make sure that you have the rifle pointing in the safe direction. Now, for this piece right here, you always want to place the stock right here in the meaty portion of your shoulder. You want to bring the shotgun tight against your body and you want to maintain contact with it. And by that, what I mean is you never want to have a gap between yourself and the firearm because whenever you shoot, it's going to go ahead and crash back into your body. And believe me, that will leave a bruise. So go ahead, bring it tight against your body. You're going to use your weak hand as your support hand. So you're going to go ahead and hold this piece right here. And that's basically how you hold the shotgun. 
Now for uh, your face, what I highly recommend is that you place the cheek or your cheek right here on the shoulder or actually right here on the stock. That way you can actually get a good proper sight picture. A lot of uh, beginner shooters are going to go ahead and be afraid of doing that. And uh, that's pretty much rightfully so. They expect a lot of recoil and they expect their face to get kicked, but that's not the case. If you have your face planted deep on the stock, then you'll be perfectly fine and the recoil will just go ahead and course straight through your body and not really punch you in the cheek. What you don't want to do is have your face all the way back here because when you shoot, then the stock will hit you in the jaw and something bad might happen. So moving on. In order to load the shotgun, you must first make sure, well, while you're shooting at our range, you're going to load it this way. Uh, you need to first make sure that the bolt in chamber is closed. You're going to go ahead, take the 12 gauge slug, you're going to go ahead, push it into the bottom breech right here, making sure that you have the white tip of the shell. I'll show you some real bullets later on. And you're going to go ahead, feed it straight in until it clicks into place. Now you can load up to seven uh, shells inside this magazine tube right here. Once you have the magazine loaded, you're going to go ahead, depress this lever right here, which unlocks the pump, and then you can go ahead and quickly pull this back and push it forward, which chambers a bullet for you. Now for the shotgun, you need to manually pump each time before you shoot. All right, now for this uh, shotgun, it also has a safety, which is this button right here. When the button is pushed over to the right, the safety's on, you will not be able to shoot. When it's pushed over to the left and you can see any red, that means the safety's off and you can fire away. Now, once you have the shotgun loaded, you're ready to shoot. Go ahead. Shoulder the weapon properly like I showed you before, bring it tight against your body, maintain contact with it, place your cheek right here on the stock, hold the shotgun, and then you want to have a good balance stance as well. Feet shoulder width apart, slightly staggered, and for you, you really need to lean into the shotgun. Make sure you lean forward and have an aggressive stance. What you do not want to do is lean back while you're shooting the shotgun because then you're going to hurt yourself in your lower back and that's not going to be good for you. So have a good aggressive stance, lean forward. Align the sights, squeeze after you've taken off the safety, and then each time you fire, pump, fire, pump. And that's it for the Remington 870 shotgun. Here we have an AK-47 that's California compliant. It has a California compliant bullet button and a legal 10 round magazine. Now. In order to shoot this weapon, you must first, once again, apply the safety rules. You want to keep this weapon pointing in a safe direction, and while you're holding it, you want to keep your fingers straight and off the trigger as well until you're ready to shoot. Now, just like with the shotgun, you need to place the stock right here in the meat fork of your shoulder, and you want to bring it tight against your body. Your weak hand can either hold the handguard, it can hold the foregrip, or it can hold the magazine. Whichever one's comfortable for you, as long as you have it tightly pressed against your body. Now, if you do hold the magazine, what you need to consider is the placement of your fingers. Now, some people have extremely long fingers and big hands, and they can actually wrap their hands completely around just like this. You don't want to do this because then you're covering the ejection port, and when you shoot, the empty shell casings fly out from right there. So if your hand's covering it, then you're going to burn yourself pretty bad. So just make sure you uh, watch the placement of your weak hand fingers, and uh, you'll be perfectly fine. Now, in order to load this firearm, you're going to need to use an actual bullet to eject the magazine, so it's going to be fairly simple. You take the bullet that we provide you with, and you stick it into this bottom hole right here. Now once you have the bullet lodged in there, you're going to push forward, and then you're going to take the magazine out. And that basically releases the magazine for you. Once you have the magazine removed, it's going to be very simple. You take your bullet, and then you press down into the magazine, and you just repeat the process until you have up to 10, magazine, or 10 bullets loaded within the magazine. Once the magazine's fully loaded, you're going to need to load the rifle. Now, this magazine right here has a little piece that sticks out. What you need to do is make sure that you hook this piece right into the receiver, and then you can insert the magazine. If you try to stick the magazine in there conventionally, you're not going to be able to stick it in there, and it's going to probably jam on you. So once you have the magazine firmly inserted, you're going to go ahead, pull back on the charging handle, and simply release it. Now, the charging handle is going to go ahead and push a bullet inside the chamber, which loads the gun, making it ready to shoot. Now, it's very important that you do not pull the charging handle back and guide it forward like this, because then you might jam the charging handle. So always just go ahead and pull it back and let the tension of the spring push it forward for you. Once this gun's loaded, you're going to be ready to shoot. So, one thing I did not cover earlier is the safety. This long lever right here is the safety. When you push it up, the safety's on. Push it down, the safety's off. Make sure that the safety is off before you fire this rifle. So, 
when you fire the rifle, go ahead, bring it tight against your body. You want to lean your face against the stock, have a good grip on it, and basically lean forward into the rifle. Once again, you're going to make sure you aim with this rifle. So, to do that, you're going to align the very front sight tip right there, right in the center of the post, right in the open gap of the rear sight post. So it's going to be just like with the pistol. Make sure the sights are flat on top. And once you have your sight alignment, go ahead and place it on your target. And when you're ready, go ahead and slowly, steadily press the trigger back until you fire out the bullet. Now for this rifle, we do not allow rapid fire, so please make sure that you fire one shot every two to three seconds, and no faster than that. Okay, so once again towards the end, we're going to go ahead and cover safety. Now as you can see, safety is very important to us, so I'm just going to go ahead and once again restate all of the safety rules that I've covered previously. You want to treat every weapon as if it were loaded, never point any weapon at anything you don't intend to shoot, keep your fingers straight and off the trigger until you're ready to fire, keep your weapon on safe until you intend to fire, and of course, you want to know your target and what lies beyond and in between it. So, thank you all for shooting with us at the Los Angeles Gun Club. We hope you enjoy your experience here, and we hope that you have a blast.